Hi, let's take a quick look at how to calculate a quadratic regression in the TI-84 calculator. The first thing you're going to need is a set of data. Once you have that data, determining which is the input value, and that'll go in for x, and which is the output value, that'll go in for y, you'll go to your stat menu. Under stat, you'll choose edit, which is your first option and you will place your x values, your inputs, into list 1 and then your y values into list 2. Those will be your outputs. Once those are in, we're going to plot this data. So I'm going to go to my stat plot option. Second, y equals. And I'll press enter on my first plot and press enter again to turn that on. It says right now it's using the scatter plot and my x's are coming from list 1 and my y's are coming from list 2. Next thing I need to do is to set my window up. There's two ways to do this. I could go to window and manually adjust it or I could go to zoom and move for me down to option number 9 which is zoom step. This will zoom it to so that all of your statistical information is included in the window. So I'll press enter at 9. And there it is. All my statistical information is there. The next thing we want to do is actually calculate the regression equation. And I do this back at my stat menu. Move over to calculate. And choose quadratic regression, number 5. Press enter. And there it is. I'm going to jot down the coefficients of my quadratic regression. A is about negative 0.243. B is about 0.751. And C is about 3.914. I'll then go to my y equals screen. And I'm going to type in my quadratic equation for this. Negative 0.243x squared plus 0.751x plus 3.914. I'll then graph this we see we get a curve that fits the data very nicely. It's not perfect, but in real world situations our data doesn't usually fit the curve perfectly, although we want it close. My next step is to calculate some important points from this. Let's say I wanted to know what the output was at x equals 5, and I have not gathered any information about that, other than what I have on my regression equation. There's two ways to do this. The first one is to press trace and actually move my cursor over. Well, as we can see right now, it's jumping from point to point. And I don't want that. I want it on my curve. So I'm going to press down, and now it's actually on the curve. And I can move left to right on my curve. Move over to where, again, x was 0.5. Find out what that output is. And you can see this is kind of tedious and I'm not going to get it to line up exactly. Close, but not exact. So that's where the next possibility comes in. I can just type in 0.5 for x and press enter and it tells me what the output is. Great! Another way I could have done that is to go on my calculate menu, second trace for calculate, and choose value and just type in 0.5 and it'll tell me that's my output. It's another way of doing it. However, some parts of our curve are very important. For instance, the vertex, the maximum value. Or if it was opening the other way, it would be the minimum, but in this case, it's the maximum. To calculate that, I would go second, calculate again, maximum, number four. To the left of it, I have to choose a left boundary, and let's choose 0.5. Press enter. To the right of it, I need a right boundary to look between. 
and let's say that is 2.5. I'll press enter. I guess uh, it's at about 1.5 for x. There it comes up. I was pretty close actually. I can do it that way. We can also use the equation, since I have the regression equation here, I could actually type I work out the opposite of b over 2a to get the axis of symmetry, then plug that back in here and get the output. But since we're using the calculator to model this anyway, this is more convenient to choose the second calculate maximum feature. Another thing we might want to find are the x-intercepts. So let me zoom out to a standard window so we can see them a little bit better. I'll go zoom 6 to get to a standard window. And now we can see those x-intercepts pretty well. Let's say I wanted to find this x-intercept. The way I'd go about that would be go, I could set the equation equal to zero and use the quadratic formula. Or since we're using this graphing utility, let's go second calculate zero, because this is a zero of the function. Our x-intercepts are called zeros because at those points, our outputs of the functions, our y values, are zero. So I'm going to calculate this zero. Choice two. Left boundary to the left of it, I've got negative four. So I'll type in negative four. Enter. To the right of it, I've got negative two. So I'll type in negative two. Enter. My guess, about at three. So negative three, rather. So negative three. Enter. And there it is. I was pretty close again. That is my x-intercept, if I need to find that. So there's a couple of nice ways to find a vertex, x-intercepts, or other points on your graph. Hope that helps. Thank you very much.